Hello my friends, I'm Clover and today we're solving Stay Classish by Philip Newman. Uh, this was originally posted in GAS on June 9th, 2024, and it's called Stay Classish because it is really a classic Sudoku in disguise, and I'll explain why in a second. So what's going on here? We have standard Sudoku rules, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9, once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3x3 three three region. And then we also have these thermometer shapes in the grid. And along each thermometer, the digits have to increase, starting from the round bulb end and going up to the tip. So this is called Stay Classish because this is a little bit of a very cheeky technical joke or prank on Philip's part. And this is something I've seen him do before, and it's genuinely really technically impressive. Where what's actually going on here is that all of these thermos have no degrees of freedom to start meaning that we can just fill them in because they are length 9. By the way, if you double click on a particular position on a thermometer in Sudoku Pad, it will automatically give you all of the matching positions in other thermometers throughout the puzzle, which is what I just did to fill that in pretty quickly. So that's handy. And at this point, we just have a classic Sudoku. So really what Philip has done for us here is identified a classic Sudoku, or created, obviously, a classic Sudoku that has this property of having the digits 1 through 9 in three uh, contiguous lines that can be connected up with the thermometer. And so now we're going to solve this as a good old-fashioned gas classic. So let's have a look. So we have these two regions that are pretty restricted at this point, so region 4 and region 6, so I'm going to pencil mark those in. 4 can't go there or there because of my 4 here, 9 can't go there, 5 cannot go there, and that doesn't actually give me anything of too much interest. Okay, let's take another approach, because I th this is a very symmetrical puzzle, so I suspect I'm going to get the same kind of mildly disappointing result if I try to focus on this region. So what I'm taking a look at now is pairs of digits that match across these two regions. For instance, these two threes rule three out of these cells, and this three rules three out of that cell, so three can only go there. So there is a hidden three in region five, and symmetrically there is also a hidden seven in region five. And so I still need to place one, two, eight, and nine. Two and eight can't go in those cells because I have a two and eight in the row, and... 2 and 8 are fixed there and there because I have a 2 and an 8 in these rows. So that can't be a 9, so that is a 4 or a 6. I can eliminate 9 from there. Could have done that already. So 9 can only go there in this region. These need to be 5 and 6 in this order to finish the row, and that's going to be a 1. And now I have a 6 in the row, so that's going to be 5 and 4, and a 6. So I finally was able to finish off those regions. Awesome. So what else do we have going on here? So I'm a little bit... We, we're, we're a little weak on given digits up at the top of the grid here. So I do see I have these two 4s that rule 4 out of these cells, and then a 4 here. So that gives me a hidden 4 down in the bottom right region. And then I also have this 6 and these two 6s. That gives me a hidden 6 in this region. And so 6 is going to be in one of those cells, and also 4 is going to be in one of those cells in those respective regions. So now I have two 9s here and I have two 8s here. Neither of those seem likely to give me a hidden digit at this point. How about we look at some rows and columns? So here I need 1, 2, 8, and 9 to finish the column down the center. That's going to that's gonna eliminate a 1, that'll eliminate a 9, that's not a 1, and that's not a 9. Interesting. I need to place a... Oh, okay, here we go. I need to place a 6 in region 8, and it is ruled out of those cells, so it goes there. And I need to place a 4 in region 2. It's ruled out of those cells, so it's going to go there. And I do need a 9 in this region. It can only go in those cells, but that doesn't quite allow me to place it. 6 is going to have to go in one of those cells. 4 will go in one of those cells in that region. How about this column and then its symmetrical column, which would be column 3. So I need 1, 3, 6, and 8 here. Those can't be 1. That can't be a 6 or an 8. 
this can't be a six either. So that's going to be either a three or an eight. And I remember seeing some talk um, when this was originally posted yesterday regarding a very sneaky naked single that needs to be found. And I kind of suspect that that's what I am looking for right now. But we will find it. We're going to hunt it down. So in this column, I need a two, five, seven, and nine. That's not five, seven. Or, oh, okay. So that's, that's going to be a naked two. That's the only digit that can go in that cell is two. And correspondingly, this can't be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, or a nine. So it is in fact a naked eight. So let's eliminate eight there and let's eliminate two from there. Now, does that by any chance give us twos elsewhere in the grid or eights elsewhere in the grid? Not that I'm seeing really interesting. How about these columns? So we need a uh, one, two, three, and nine here. That's not a one. That's not a three or a nine. So three is going to be in one of those two cells. Hmm. It's a little surprising to me that that didn't really unlock anything. This column, I still need one, three, and five, and that can't be a one. But other than that, that's pretty open. Um, in this position, I can't have a one, a two, a three, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, or a nine. So that that's going to be a naked four. Oh, there's some really cheeky naked singles here. Oh, and this can't be a three, so that's going to be a six. I really should have seen that. Um, that's not a nine. So these are three, five, seven, and eight. And this cell can't be three, five, or eight. So that's a seven. Oh man, we really are hunting for naked singles today. That's a lot of fun. Okay. So let's do the corresponding deduction up here. This cell that I have highlighted right now can't be one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So that's a three, making this a five. That's now a one, eight pair. So that's our six. And these cells are going to contain two and seven. And I don't know the order yet. These will be 2, 7, and 9. That can't be a 7, so I have this 2, 9 pair. This is now going to be a 4. That can't be a 2, of course. These have to be 2, 5, and 7. So that will be my 7 because I have 2 and 5 in the row. That makes this a 2 and a 5 and resolves this. And the 7 resolves this 2, 9 situation here. That's not a two because there's a two in the row. Uh, this is the only position for a seven in this row and I need one or eight there. And then these are going to be either eight or nine. What am I not seeing? There we go. Okay, there's a seven in that row. That makes this a nine and that should crack it wide open. Awesome. There we are. I'm just trying to avoid making any mistakes by going too quickly here. That would be very easy to do at this stage in solving. But we got through. There we go. So that is Philip's Stay Classish. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, very, very, uh, very traditional Philip, I think. Um, finding a classic that has that quality of being quote unquote reducible to a thermo sudoku that doesn't actually have any degrees of freedom. I think that's a very neat. I really enjoy seeing that kind of thing. And Philip definitely has a knack for for turning up puzzles that are in some way technically remarkable while also being approachable and fun to solve. I think that's very cool. So if you want to solve yourself, the link is in the description below this video. Enjoy, and I will see you again in three days.